before you start a DAO, you're going to have to ask yourself as to why uh, this DAO needs to exist. Um, primarily, it seems to be an extension of why blockchains and open networks were built, which is, am I solving a problem of trust, right? So with respect to a DAO, think of an organization that currently performs a function that fun that has a big trust deficit. And usually it's it's these trust deficits are formed around things of policy and more often things of money. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is the first question that you need to ask yourself. What is the big problem of trust that I'm solving by creating this decentralized autonomous organization? We've also seen communities that can uh, kind of build themselves uh, and govern themselves around uh, a decentralized autonomous organization. So essentially, you've seen a lot of programming communities, a lot of uh, communities that do tasks for a particular ecosystem. And there is a level of transparency that you can kind of build if uh, the way this organization, instead of kind of building some sort of a consultancy or a, or a community-based centralized business, you could actually do uh, you could actually do and govern that as a DAO. So that was the uh, that that's the first thing that you need to answer yourself. The second thing is you need to very detailedly uh, determine what the DAO will do. Will it ensure that disbursement of funds is done in a uh, in a in a way that is open and transparent to a community with community being able to vote on it? Will it actually be uh, will it function in creating something like a stable coin? that uh, say make a doubt does, right? And uh, uh, does the community get to decide how the protocol kind of is, uh, how the protocol will evolve? Uh, that is the second thing that uh, you have to perhaps uh, think about, but very, very clearly define what it means to, uh, what, what exactly will the DAO do and how does governance work within that? So you have your why, you have a very clear understanding of why this DAO needs to exist. Uh, secondly, you now have defined what is the exact function the DAO will perform and how the community will, uh, how, how you're going to kind of open transparency and uh, I mean, uh, open up how this DAO functions to the community that will uh, potentially govern it and how exactly that governance will happen, right? And then you are now in now in the business of growing a DAO. Like, how do I get more and more people to a buy into uh, this new way of doing a function that currently exists uh, in a very centralized way, right? So uh, this was uh, put out by uh, Jess Sloss, I think, a couple of uh, years ago. Uh, I mean, a couple of months ago about how to get uh, a uh, how to get started with a DAO. And for a large part, we are seeing this happen across multiple DAOs that, you know, we have the better right here in India, there are uh, two big ones, like, for example, uh, Super Team uh, and, uh, and Questbook uh, as DAOs. What we, what we see is that uh, essentially they do a bunch of NFT drops uh, on, on the chain. So basically that gives the chain some value that uh, people would spend to get that NFT and those NFTs have inherent value. They then share this NFT to people who have, uh, who can potentially add value to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the DAO. So I, I still remember when Parin and I did a bunch of uh, sessions with, uh, uh, with Questbook, the guys were super happy to kind of give us uh, a very, very cool looking NFT. And I should probably change my profile picture to that in some time. It's really nice. Right. Then what happens is that you also have some, uh, you know, you, you, what you can do is start gating the access to this uh, community somewhere. And usually these communities are managed on Discord uh, with the possession of, of that, of either a token or an NFT or uh, some sort of task that you have to do to be able to get into it. So what you're essentially doing uh, is, and see how it's different from building a community for uh, for a general token project. So usually what happens is that communities and token projects get built closer to launch uh, of the token because there's liquidity. And usually these most of these people are like retail investors. But now what you're doing is that you're making this entry into this ecosystem really, really curated. And you're ensuring that it's either people who you think can add value to the DAO or people who have done some work uh, which can contribute to the functioning of the DAO goes back to the second question, right? Like what does the DAO do, right? Uh, if it's education, then you probably want to have 
you know very good educators to possess the uh, to to possess and have access to your community uh, and, uh, and and you know you can uh, that that will keep changing depending on what you want it out to do and then finally what you uh, what you have is you have a critical mass of uh, of people in your community who are contributing to the way in which the DAO works and you empower them uh, with governance rights, usually represented by a fungible ERC-20 token. Now, again, none of this is mine. Uh, this is something that you know, Jess Loss uh, from C Club uh, had shared. But more importantly, this is uh, in, in many ways, the DAOs that we are seeing around right now are doing this to get started. So you've answered why the DAO needs to exist. You very specifically define what the DAO does and how the community interacts with it. And then you start building that community. And the way you're building that community is first giving the DAO itself value by creating NFTs. These NFTs are then given to people that can really add value to the DAO. And then you make the community management space, which is usually Discord, uh, you know, gated by the community and ensure that you uh, you can only access it if you have a have the DAO, uh, you know you have the DAO you have you have the NFT or you have a particular token or you've done something uh, to be able to get into that uh, into that Discord community and then you pass on uh, native tokens to this DAO which is usually the function is usually represented as a set of contracts uh, and you give out native tokens for the governance of those of those contracts into the hand of the people that are in that uh, in that uh, in that DAO. Once you've done these four things, what has happened is you have a thriving community who contributes to how your DAO functions. And you have a way in which you can bring a very curated set of people into the DAO. And you've given these people a fungible uh, token that can basically be, uh, that, that you can potentially create a money market on. And when you do that, there is now a financial incentive for the people to be able to do, uh, to participate in the functioning of the DAO. And essentially, um, you know, there is a you can create a money market on that uh, on that token, and you can basically uh, be able to um, you know exchange it for money, change it for other tokens, or uh, you know make this a part of your uh, earnings uh, in in the, in the way in which you uh, contribute to the ecosystem. And then, uh, what you now have built is an ecosystem which does, uh, I mean, a, a, a community or an ecosystem that does a particular task, which is governed by people who are relevant to the DAO. And, uh, you know, they now have a monetary incentive uh, represented by the governance token uh, to continue to do this. So that I would say is, this, is the process of kind of starting a DAO. Uh, this largely works for um, good uh, for, for simple processes, right? Like, okay, um, you know, if you look at the uh, Ethereum uh, page, uh, uh, Ethereum uh, website's page on DAOs, it gives a, a set of really simple examples, right? Like it could be a charity where how the money is earned and disbursed is completely transparent and people can vote on which initiatives should we be, you know, giving the money to. And then you could have a set of people who verify the validity of that, of that cause. Uh, that is that is a that is a fairly simple way of doing it. There are DAOs that take decisions on which companies or uh, you know investing in these companies as a decision, which is community governed. This is something that you can do as well. Um, you know, in, in fact, uh, uh, the Polygon founder and a set of really interesting people have come together to start something called Indie DAO, and you know you should check it out. That uh, it it constantly funds uh, projects of Indian origin as a mandate, but then. Uh, uh, it it basically puts money in the hand of a developer or a startup that's going out to build something uh, really interesting. This kind of becomes more complicated as soon as the function of the organization is also complex, right? Uh, and 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 this is something that you know you have to really really think through. If this is if there's a education DAO, uh, if there is something like a uh, you know. Um, a DAO version of Facebook or Uber or anything like that. The problem is that the functioning of these organizations are extremely complex and diverse. Um, as a startup, what I this is my personal belief in in this space, and you know you can you you can take it as a perspective, is that you've got to really think about hard coding a lot of the ways in which a particular function or a part of a particular function runs. And it has to be hard coded into the DAO uh, 
you know basically from uh, from that uh, to perform that function and if you don't know how a, the every single detail of how that function uh, function is to be performed and how that changes as the organization scales then it becomes really hard uh, to do the, uh, to do this and secondly the way these organized function uh, organizations function is um, is in a very hierarchical centralized structured uh, way community governance on many aspects of running uh, a particular organization is still not clear uh, and uh, uh, building a, a method which could potentially be wrong may uh, not be the best thing for uh, uh, for a dao uh, that uh, that intends on you know being a long term sustainable network um so think that through right usually one of the things uh, that you uh, that you perhaps need to add uh, after the question of why you're building the dao is going to be is this something that is executable do i know every part of the process that uh can be uh, that uh, that needs to be done to make this function as an organization and then can i hard code that logic into the dao that it functions autonomously uh, and then of course in a decentralized way now this is this doesn't mean that you shouldn't do a dao from day one of course you know if your community is strong enough it could build amendments into things that are not working uh, but it's just a, it, it's just exceptionally hard to build organizations to start with and then to build the same th- uh, do the same thing that that organization does in a decentralized and autonomous way is directly pro- uh, the difficulty of doing that is directly proportional to how complex the organization is that you're trying to make into the, make into the dao so keep these in consideration uh, and if you're building a dao good luck we'd love to hear more about it uh, at builders right thanks